This is, this is, this is. Hey, welcome to a brand new episode of the podcast. I'm your host, Mike Herrera, episode number 373. Um, let's talk about you today. I'm going to play and answer some of your voicemails, and it's going to be on this episode. So uh, buckle up, everybody. Buckle up. Maybe we'll talk about me a little bit, too. We'll see. <laughs> I have no guest, um, and we'll see how it goes. I'm just going to be talking to you. Um, let's go. Uh, MXPX, of course, MXPX.com. We, uh, we're always trying to make things better little by little. And uh, we finally fixed the website, MXPX.com, over at the merch arsenal. And uh, there, was some, there was some behind the scenes stuff that was very annoying. And uh, we got some of that fixed up. So it's going to work much better for, for you guys. Um, that being said, maybe a 2021 update. Um, MXPX, what are we doing? We... It's been obvious we haven't been doing any live streams, no between this world and the next shows coming up. Um, that probably will happen again someday, but um, we thought it was time. People were getting real antsy out in the world, and it only it kind of seemed to make people mad not announcing live shows. Like, where when is MXPX playing live? So we decided to take a break. Um, Chris Adkins, congratulations, had a had a baby. So it was a perfect time. He uh, He's almost out of the baby cave. It's been probably a little over a month since he had, since his, or may, maybe a little less. I don't know. But uh, around a month. So uh, <laughs> life is crazy. It's been crazy lately. It's always been crazy, though. Looking back, remembering back to the old days, it was crazy then, it's crazy now. So um, I'm just happy to be here. Cheers to Silver City. Um, they put out a new beer called Rock On, um, in part with uh, Crosby. Crosby hops. Hops are the some of the things that go into the beer. So Crosby hops um, really make the essence of what you what you taste in a lot of the beers. So, hmm. Uh, Anyway, they got together, and uh, we, MXPX, are part of it just because we thought it was a great idea. It, it's uh, A lot of the, the money is raised for charity, uh, for musician, the Sweet Relief Musicians Fund. And um, it's the type of beer I love, crafted lager. It's uh, similar to, to a European lager, but it's got American hops and American things that I don't understand about beer. But... Uh, loving it, love the can, it's so rock and roll. So shout out to Silver City, Crosby Hops, and anybody else involved. Uh, a lot of breweries uh, were given the recipe and encouraged to participate in, in this charity beer. So uh, I hope they did, and I hope you guys uh, get to try it. If you see it out there in the world, rock on Crafted Lager. It's uh, for a good cause. All right, we're just getting started, right? Let's have some fun. Cheers, you guys. Mm. Thanks for listening to Say Yes, our, our latest song. It's out of everywhere. If you haven't already added it to your music library, your streaming library, please do. It really uh, it helps us out a ton. And um, for that matter, any of our new songs, any songs we release on our own helps us out immensely. So please, uh, Can't Keep Waiting, we released that uh, late spring. That was... Uh, that was a song that we really, really had a good time because had a good time doing because we recorded it after we had actually played it live many, many times on Between This World and the Next. We ended up playing it. Once we played it live the first time, we just kept playing it every single show. And it it tweaked. Some some days were better than others. And it, it tweaked a little bit. For the, but for the most part, it just got tighter. And when we were ready to record, we knew exactly what we wanted to do. There was no hesitation. So that was that was really cool. Had a great time with that. Um. So check it out. I've been so obsessed with hot sauce. Uh, and I have been for a long time. And there was there was a time where I was like, man, I just wish I could get into something other than music. I love music. I love technology. I like, but, but songwriting, all of that. But I wanted to get into something that wasn't that, you know. And I realized one day, I'm like, wait. I am into something. I'm into hot sauce. I love hot sauce. And it's not just one hot sauce. I like a lot of different hot sauces. Although I have a I have a, a type. I have a type that I like. There's there's a certain style that that I really enjoy. And 
let's just get into it. Let's get into it. I'll tell you my favorite hot sauce. A lot of you already know because I released a video about it. But um, my obsession started, well, I've, I've always liked salsa and hot sauce. We, we used to go uh, Tom Wisniewski um, and Yuri and we, the whole band and, and all our friends. We'd go to Azteca in Silverdale, Washington, which was down the street from, from where we went to high school. And we would order a half, a half a, like a full order of rice, but half of it. So ha like chicken. So, so it would be just rice and beans. So it'd be a half order of rice, half order of beans, but you'd pay just for the one side order. So it'd be like $1.50, $1.75 back in those days. And then we'd get free s s chips and salsa. And so we would just go there, order, you know, order one thing of beans and rice and then just eat chips and salsa and just everybody we'd have a giant table you know and, and sometimes we would order other things but I just remember that being sort of like our go-to uh when we didn't have any money but we definitely had appetites so maybe that was some of the the beginnings of my obsession with hot sauce <laughs> just remembering those Azteca days it's so so much fun but uh yeah, yeah, you could do that back then. I'm sure you can still do that. You could probably still do that. <laughs> but uh, so so fast forward to a few years, quite a few years ago, Legionnaire, when, when I was doing Legionnaire uh, clothing with, with my buddy Joe Moxley, he, he uh, made some hot sauce. He partnered up with this guy, and, and this guy actually is from the Seattle area, although I never found out his, his info. He stopped making the hot sauce. But... Let me tell the story. He he made this hot sauce for Legionnaire, and we had Legionnaire hot sauce. It was awesome. I was like, "This is so good. This is this is probably my favorite hot sauce." And it was habanero style for sure. Um, and then and then I had MXPX make. It was the same hot sauce, but I had MXPX labeled hot sauce, Left Coast sauce, or something like that. And that was something I was like, oh, "Let's make a bunch and sell it." And I ended up we ended up selling a few to like the fan club, uh, you know, just like a, a very small amount because <laughs> the hot sauce was so good. I got greedy and I was like, I just want this hot sauce for myself. Uh, not that I don't want to sell it to anybody or give it to anybody. Cause I've given it away as gifts to, to friends, but I was just like, I'm just going to keep this. And so whenever Joe would find, I found some more hot sauce, I'd be like, send it up. He'd send it up. And I'd be like, I don't want to, I'm going to keep this <laughs> and I just keep it and I just ate it. You know, I used it on my breakfast burritos. If you don't know, I'm obsessed with breakfast burritos as well, but, um, I ate it on those, those for, until it ran out. And then randomly every now and then I'll find an unopened bottle and I'll be like, yes, I'll find it over at the merch arsenal and be like, yes, this fell through the cracks, didn't get sold and I'll take it and eat it. But, um, that I, I've I've let it go because when we moved to Texas, I found um, a really great hot sauce. Before we get to Texas, but though I, I got to add another go-to hot sauce was always Cholula sauce, the one with the the wooden um, the wooden cap as like almost like a hat, wooden cap. The ladies got a I don't know if it, I don't know I'm, I, that's what, the way I think of it. It's probably not at all what it is. It's just a wooden cap that looks like a round ball. But anyway, that was that's like that's not a bad. I mean, that was a go a good go to breakfast hot sauce for me. Cholula sauce, uh, Cholola sauce, Cholola yeah, Cholola sauce, something like that. Uh, I didn't do any research. I'm just going off uh, the old noggin up here, guys. Yes. So anyway, uh, <laughs> that was always good, but. But uh, that was something that, you know, of course, was around back, I think, even back in the Azteca days. But but back then it was more salsa. We just we ate the, the homemade salsa. I could drink the homemade salsa. So could Tom, by the way. Tom, those that don't know, Tom Wisniewski is a champion spice foods eater. He can eat the spiciest food out of anybody I've ever seen in my life and barely barely blink an eye he won't get twitchy or anything like it's just he's straight up like that's that's yeah that's got some heat he's good and so uh i definitely think at some point we need to do our own version of like a hot wings uh challenge with tom so uh, maybe we'll make that happen in the future let us know let me know if you're not already subscribed to all our you know podcast stuff please do and let me know mm. 
so to Texas. Um, so when we're in Texas, you know, we go to HEB. It's the greatest grocery store I've ever really come across. Um, it's, it's not pretentious in any way, but it has amazing products. It really does. It has all, a lot of the type of products that you would expect at a really fancy grocery store, like a central, central market. Um, although that is owned by HEB. So duh. Um, but, uh, you know, like anyway, uh, enough with the HEB, those in Texas know what's up and they're like, yes, I love HEB. But, um, you know, getting to try all this stuff that they had there was amazing. They have really great products. And one of the things they have is Jose, uh, Julio's. Julio's from Del Rio, Texas. So uh, Julio's was always something that, like, you look at the bottle and you're like, okay, it just looks like every other hot sauce company. So it's not like some fancy new, like, thing or anything. It's just a real traditional company that, that makes... They make tortilla chips, they make salsa, they make a bunch of different products, and they make a couple of different hot sauces. They've got a verde sauce as well. Um, I think they've got a chipotle sauce that's that's green. Anyway, the, the habanero sauce, the hot sauce. It's it's just Julio's habanero hot sauce. I don't think even say I don't think it even says habanero. I think it just says Julio's hot sauce, but it's the red sauce. And it's been really hard to get lately. Usually in the past, of course, you just go to the store and get it, but it hasn't been on the shelves. And then I started ordering it online. Um, I would get it, get it from on Amazon. I'd get it straight from their website. And then now it's gone. So I want to know, where are you? Where are you, Julio's? Where, where art thou? <laughs> you know, like they sent me a box of uh of products and there was one bottle of julio's hot sauce the habanero style and i'm very grateful thank you so much uh shouting you out on this podcast there's no sponsors but this may as well be one because uh i love you i love you julio's um what happened to your 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 hot sauce there must be a supply chain issue maybe some maybe some got something got spilled at the factory something happened uh there has been nothing and and i've looked i've looked on their website i've i've looked around i haven't really seen any news about it <laughs> i know i know should there be news about it well for me being obsessed with hot sauce i feel like there should be news about it so another brand that's it's a brand that you can get almost anywhere they're pretty big i think Her herdez and they have great diced tomatoes, diced chilies, uh, good products for Mexican style food or, or anything like that. So uh, Her Herdez is great. Good, good salsas. Like they even have the salsa that's just in a can and you, you use a can opener and eat it and dump it out. Um, we get that a lot. So, but Julio's, Julio's is the best. It really is. Um, shout out to Anthology Tattoo of my buddy Shane uh, gets tattooed there in Bremerton and he, he, the dude, I guess makes hot sauce. And so Shane got some, some hot sauce and, and gave me a bottle. So, and it's really good. It's really good. It's like Mexican style, street style, um, not super red, but, but red, um, really good. But I love habanero style hot sauce that has almost like, uh, it's hard to explain, but an Indian food vibe to it. Uh, what I mean is like East Indian, um, like, uh, Vindaloo and like all that stuff. So, so like whatever the spices they use, there's a little hint of that in, in, uh, in this habanero style. I, I don't know what it is. And that reminds me, shout out to my buddy, Jose Garzon, because he's a chef in Seattle, in the Seattle area. And he, uh, he back you know, we played music together and stuff with the All-Stars. And, and so back when I was like, hmm, hmm, I really need, I need to just make my own hot sauce. <laughs> back when, the, uh, you know, I ran out of the MXPX hot sauce, I asked him to make me some samples. And he made me like six bottles of different things with uh, numbers, each numbered. And they were all, had different variations of that habanero style. Because I sent him and I was like, this is, this is the style, you know, just make this exactly or something similar. And he got really close 
on all accounts. There was one that was really, really super, super spicy on, on the, uh, as far as like the herbs or the, the flavors they use in the Indian food. Um, again, don't know what that's called, <laughs> but, uh, it's it, it, when you taste it, you know it, you know, and uh, it's really good. It, but it, it's not something you think of when you think of Mexican food, for sure. But uh, but yeah, and so Jose made me these six bottles, and they were really good. But I I don't think I was ready at the time. My my taste wasn't developed, and I guess I wish I knew then what I know now. I know what I'm looking for now. Uh, although obviously I need to do some more research on my terminology, but I'm not really actively looking. So I guess I'm just I'm kind of looking and people hand me hot sauces. And when I find that one, that's like, oh, this is my new favorite that I can actually get, you know, Julio's is my favorite, but I can't get it. You know, I've got one bottle, I'm hoarding it. I'm like holding on to it like it's gold. Like it's going to be worth millions of dollars because there's just, you just like, you can't. Like the last bottle of Julio's on planet Earth right here, you know, who knows? So anyway, uh, Jose Garzon, he made me all these different samples. Any one of them could have been great, done. So <laughs> now that he's he's really successful, he, he's got a really great uh, pop-up slash, uh, they do lunches and dinner events uh, and they sell out all the time. Uh, it's Asian, it's Latin food, Asian food, Latin food, uh, Latinx, uh, anything you can think of and he makes great food, but he probably is too busy now, now that I know what I want. But uh, maybe when he's ready to to do something new, we'll, we'll get together again and make that, make that hot sauce happen. Ah, okay. Should we get to some voicemails? Let's get to your voicemails. Now, I have not listened to these voicemails ahead of time because I wanted to be surprised. So I might have to edit some out. Just be aware. It could happen. So um, let's, let's, see, let's see where we go. And we won't, we won't do too many. We'll just do like five, six, seven, somewhere in there. Um, and then uh, we'll end this thing. Okay? All right. Thank you guys so much. I hope you're enjoying this episode. Mm. Here we go. Let's get to it. Voicemail one. <laughs> Hello, uh, MXPX and uh, Mike Carrera. This is Seth Rogen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Um, here's my question for you. Um, uh, has there ever been a, a point in time or, or uh, I? You know, you have so many great songs. You have so many riffs. Uh, is there like a single or something like where you listen to your riff and you go, holy shit, that is this other band's riff. That is this thing, you know, that, like, you know, I mean, they're small town, small minds, like, you know, like where you're, you know, maybe it's when you're, but like, you know, like responsibility. One of my favorite riffs in the entire world. But, like, do you hear that and you go, that's just this band? Uh, you know, so hopefully that was uh, clear. Uh, thank you very much. You know, long time listener, first time caller. <laughs> <laughs> uh, long time listener, first time caller. Uh, but, you know, yeah, is there a riff that you have of your guys' band uh, where you go, uh, that's just this shit and like no one else, you know, knows it, I guess. <laughs> I, I'm, all right. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Love you guys. Thank you so much. See you later. Okay. Okay. Was that Seth Rogen? Uh, <laughs> it kind of, I mean, that was a pretty good impression. I don't think it was actually him, but he was laying it on a little thick, uh, and maybe he probably, if it was really Seth Rogen, he probably would have said, this is Seth from California <laughs> or whatever. But anyway, uh, valid question. I don't really, the question itself is valid with responsibility. I'm like, what does it sound like other than responsibility? To me, it's like, that's it. That's responsibility. Uh, but, you know, you're, you're right, though, because now and again, I'll write something and I'll realize, oh, this sounds like this song. And what you have to do is change it, change it enough to where it's different or you know the, you, you don't feel like you're ripping off somebody else's song and, and not a, each songwriter has a varying degree of that i think like billy joe armstrong from green day has a a, a, 
a more lenient stance on what sounds like another person's song. But a, a lot of people would say, oh, well, that's just, that's just, you know, you know, you want to write a hook. And there's only so many hooks. So you got to kind of have to borrow something and make it your own. I mean, I do agree with that. But I, I to be honest, I really, truly try to write original hooks, original ideas. And if I do notice that it's something already exists, then I'll change it. Um, a perfect example, there's, there's a... Uh, band called I think they're called slow ride um but anyway uh you know we had a one part of our song was exactly like their song and uh they were a band from Dallas Texas and I'd never heard the song before and I was like literally like that's that's a coincidence it's one part the rest of the song is totally different that kind of thing but it's just the guitar part itself it's like you know that's it it's it's there's only so many things you can do but how many times have you written like a one, four, five song and it sounds new and fresh for me? Hundreds, hundreds and hundreds. A one, four, five is like a the easiest way to describe would be like a, a Ramon style beat on the brad or like dun, 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 dun. so it's a one, 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 four, five on the chord. Yeah, you can make you could do that in so many different ways. But but to answer your question, Seth, Seth Rogan. Uh, no, it does not sound like anything to me. And by the time I release it, it's got to sound like my song. So if it, it never usually gets to even the band, you know, I, I, I notice that usually before, uh, before I bring it to the band and then I just change it. But, um, things can slip through and those are just coincidences. So yeah, it's all good. It's, it's, it's a crazy world. Um, let's get to the next, next voicemail. Hey, Mike, this is Jackson out of Melbourne, Florida. I have uh, two rumors and stories I'd like for you to elaborate on. The first being a story you told to Alternative Press when you guys were on the cover, uh, around the before everything and after days, just about multiple fights you used to get into, uh, either backstage or after shows or before shows or whatever. If you could uh, just pick and tell a story about one of the funnier ones you got into, or gnarlier ones for that matter, one that stands out. And I guess secondly, I heard a rumor that at an Orlando Warp Tour, uh, a rude and inappropriate jerk fan and a um, muddy pit, I think it was uh, at the Speed World when Warp Tour was there, yeah. apparently chucked a pretty decent amount of mud in your face and you were calling out the person to come up and fight you uh, in the middle of a show. That was a rumor I heard. I wasn't at the show. I just would love to know if there's uh, any any truth behind it. And sorry that happened. Excited for new music. Uh, whenever that comes out, appreciate you. Cool. Hey, thanks for the call, Jackson. Um, yes, I remember that 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 show, that Warp Tour show, and it got it got rainy and muddy, and it was like, of course, you know, it gets muddy. What do people want to do? They want to throw mud, and. I don't, I, it's hazy, but I do, I'm sure that I, I called him out and was like, come on up here, let's go, let's fight. Um, but, you know, people usually didn't take me up on those offers. And so I didn't get in that many fights. There was like, there was bouncers and I mean, there was a few fights, but, but, you know, it would always get quickly de-escalated. Luckily, luckily, um, by the time we were doing shows like that Warp Tour show. But uh, to answer your first question, um, yeah, I mean, it's not like there was like brawls all the time or fights, but there was a few. Um, I think one of the best one, the gnarly, I don't know if there's a funny fight, but one of the gnarlier ones, because a lot of the fights were like some kid would be spitting on us the whole show and then we'd like try to fight him or he'd try to fight us or uh, talk, you know. But for the most part we're not fighting fans it was always just some random person um that probably was still at the show like for for instance <laughs> our our um our merch guy gary at the time he was kind of just people were drunk all the time so we were in europe doing warp tour this was 1998 97 ni no 98 or 99 somewhere in there and 
uh, De Totenhosen was was like the headliner, so the, from Germany. So like that's that's how long ago it was. It was a while ago. Uh, no use for a name was on the tour, um, and we were in Slovenia, and he, he, the, our merch guy Gary, what there was p- drunk people all night, but there was these two particular guys that were just giving him shit, and then next to him he was with the Smooths. Uh, Smooths were a ska band from Baltimore back in the day. They were on the tour, and their merch guy and guitar player were actually their merch guy was back there, and and he said something and he got punched. And so when he got punched, everybody was in this uproar and they're like, where are the guy at? And I just, me and Thomas Nesky again, guitar player from MXPX happened to be right there. And we're like, where is he? And we went with Gary, our merch guy and uh, the guitar player of the smooths. He was a small guy and he was like all fired up. And so he goes out there and he's yelling at these guys. And, and all of a sudden one of the guys, hits him they go down we all jump we all kind of jump at the same time there's a there's a barricade and the rain starts pouring down it's like a scene from from the outsiders when they're having this big brawl socias and the greasers you know and that's what it felt like so it was very dramatic and cinematic all at the same time and we're just like punching 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 gary our merch guy is like rolling around with some other dude so we waited you, you know, like we, I didn't throw a punch until one of our guys got punched and then we started punching, you know? So like we didn't run around looking for fights back in the day. And, and like I said, it, it, you know, it sounds good in, in AP magazine to say we're in a bunch of fights and we were, but they weren't like brawls. That was like, honestly, the one I just, the t- story I just told was the most cinematic. Everything else was just like scro- squabbles and a punch here and there, wrestling matches. I mean, me and Thomas Nesky have gotten in fights too, you know, <laughs> with each other. You know, that, you know, things get intense on the bus. You know, when you're when you're traveling around the country in a very confined area. All right, let's move on. Mike Ben Redard here, Colin. To leave you a voicemail for your podcast, just want to let you know that I've been an MXPX fan since 1996. I was lucky enough to see you guys at the Gothic in February before the world shut down. So snuck in one extra show there, which was great. Um, the Life in Quarantine shows that you did and the album that you guys put together was fantastic. The Between This World and the Next shows have been amazing, really helping me get through this crazy year. Um, and it's been fantastic. And I just want you to know that I appreciate the effort that you guys put in to putting those shows together and putting those records out. Uh, the camera creativity, I feel like that you and Tom Chichilla were talking about on your last podcast episode was really, really neat how you got the idea from how you used to, how someone used to film your, your practices and you use that method to actually film your shows. And I think the camera work has even gotten better as those between this world and the next shows have gone along. So Really cool. Um, there was one thing that you guys were, that Tom was talking about on the last podcast about how shows are going to look different in 2021. And I'm curious what you guys think is going to be different about shows, concerts in 2021. And, uh, that was my, my main question for you guys there. Um, also just want to drop that the new Goldfinger album is amazing. I've been listening to that thing nonstop. Favorite song is probably Good Guy. Great vocal work on there. And uh, that video of you playing the guitar with Rhodes drumming the other day was really cool. So keep rocking, Mike, uh, Tom, Yuri, Chris. Thanks for all you guys do. Thanks for being MXPX, and thanks for keeping it going. Take care. Right on. Thanks, Ben. Awesome, awesome. It's good good to know that, you know, it's, it's making a difference there. Uh, appreciate it. Man, I... Don't know if there was a question in there. Was there a question in there? <laughs> uh, good times. Uh, camera work, man. It's a uh, shout out to John Boyce. He, uh, he really takes a lot of effort, you know, it takes a lot of effort, it takes time. And he like asked me, what's your set list for this next show? And then I'll send him the set list and he'll listen to it for cues and stuff like that. And he'll review some of the practices that we do. And uh, trying to go the extra mile. So thank you. I'm, I'm glad you noticed. Um, 
man. So your question was, uh, what do you think concerts are going to be like in 2021, 2022? Of course, is coming up <laughs> pretty soon. Uh, and that uh, is a good question. I don't personally know, but I'll, I'll try to just uh, just riff on it for a second. Um, we see a, a lot of shows right now um, happening, and some of them are getting canceled. Some of them are happening. Some of them are, are getting, uh, they're making, so, so this is what's happening. Vaccine uh, mandates, vaccine mandates at shows, um, for tours, things like that. Now, it's not happening for every show or every tour, but certain shows. And why is that? Because Live Nation and the shows, you know, the big companies that really are in charge of everything, that really make everything move and happen, they don't want to take a stand for or against um, vaccine mandates. And so they're giving the artists choice, which is cool. I mean, I like choice. I don't know that that's a bad thing because, you know, all, here's why it's a bad thing because the liability is always going to go towards the artist. They don't want the liability. But here's where it's a good thing. Artists with more choice. That's not a bad thing, is it? Now, just having a choice we've always thought was a good thing until 2021. Now it's, eh, is it a good thing? I don't know. Now I think it's still a good thing. Um, what's gonna happen? We don't know, but are we gonna still try to play live? Yes. Uh, it's too late for 2021, but I've said if somebody somebody wants to get crazy with us and, and give us a little crazy amount of money that we can't say no to, well then we have to think about from there, we have to think about, okay, is the is the situation right for our, our band crew and fans? But um, if it's a good situation, then sure, we'd do it. But I think we're going to wait until 2022. In fact, I know we're going to wait until 2022. That's what that's what I've been talking about with with Tom Chichilla and Nicole. And um, it seems like the best thing to do. And t you know, Tom and Yuri are are ready to go. And Chris isn't quite ready to go yet, but he will be soon. And there's so much more to do than just playing shows. We've been really busy uh, working on uh, merchandise, the box set stuff, of course, and new songs. You know, we, we put out Say Yes, but we've got other new stuff in the works, and uh, it's going to take a little while, so don't get too excited. But we are working, and we're working really hard. So um, no matter what happens with the world, MXPX is going to be around. Um, but just hang in there and keep it positive. You know, I think... Give, give people a little leniency, be less judgmental, be a little more hopeful, and um, expect, expect the unexpected. That's, that's for sure. All right, let's, uh, let's go to the next one. Hi, this is Monty from San Antonio. I figured it was a good time to call, and thank you for the many years of music and shows and the community you've built. I've made really good friends. I've traveled a lot. And I have so many great memories. Between this world and the next have been so good. The set lists have been incredible. And you blew my mind with my mistakes. And now all I need is Rock and Roll Girl and Arrest Me. And my MXPX Live Song bucket list will be checked off. So almost there. But I look forward to the next live stream and even more so to the live shows. Thank you all again for keeping me sane for many, many years and for really loving your fans and for doing it for us. You've built a great community, and I'm so, so happy to be a part of it. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. That's so cool. Um, I didn't quite catch your name at the beginning. It was really hard to understand. What is it? Uh... Hi, this is Marty from San Antonio. Marty. Oh, hey. Okay. I think I know who you are. How you doing? Uh, amazing. Amazing. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, my mistake. Loved doing that song. Bringing that back. Having that be part of it. We even started playing it right at the beginning of 2020, we played it in Texas, San Antonio. It was great. Uh, but we, what did we do? Uh, I don't know what else we did, but <laughs> you will find out soon, sooner, soon enough. Um, yes, let me think, let me think, let me think. 
Arrest Me. That's a song, hadn't even thought about it, honestly. Honestly, like, hadn't thought about it. Rock and Roll Girl, we did do on the very last number 10 on Between This World, uh, set 10, round 10. We did Rock and Roll Girl, so hopefully you caught that one. Um, I don't know when you left this voicemail, but thank you so much for calling. I appreciate it. And yeah, I'm very proud of, of the, the community that we've, we've built. And it's all because of people like you. So uh, thank you and thanks for sticking around. All right, let's get to one more. Let's do one more. Hey, Mike. My name is Philip, uh, 479-340-7422. Okay. And hoping this is one of the most random messages you get. Uh, I am calling to see if there is any chance you would be interested in uh, joining up to um, buy out a small uh, a, uh, 499 capacity venue in a small American town that's uh, struggling, and um, I'm considering making a push to acquire it. So, and, and something like that would be. Uh, Having a partner like you, someone in the scene, someone people uh, love, would really make it go. I think so. Anyhow, just just a, a total random uh, inquiry. Again, my name is Philip four nine three four zero seven four two. Hit me up. Thanks. All right, Philip. Thanks for the call. Um, yeah, that was that's pretty random. Um, I would say one um, great idea. Um, it's something that I'm definitely interested in in my life but right now no definitely not um that's basically like do you want a new job or basically a, a do you want to change careers because i feel like to really do something right you have to put most of your time into it at least to get things to get things off the ground to get things going you got to put in a lot of time i mean just just starting these live live streams i put in two two months of not necessarily like solid eight hour days or anything, but you know, planning, 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 getting stuff, putting stuff together, trying to figure out how it works, all of that, you know, consulting with people. It's a lot of work. So great idea. And in, at, in some point in my life, I would love to do that. Now, where, where the town is definitely matters to me. Um, there needs to be some story attached, I think, to really succeed in, in, in this business climate today. And that's definitely a story. Of course, he's, he's going for the story, right, Philip? But um, yeah, it's, it's not a, uh, hey, you know, I don't, I don't mind you asking. That's ask away. But um, I am writing songs. That's really where, I mean, again, I don't sit here all day and write. You know, I have to, I go about my day. I live life. I get things done. And then, okay, now it's time to write. Or maybe I have a, a few hours of writing midday and then I, I write again at night. So like I'm not writing all day, but I really need to be focused on writing to write something good. And I feel like that's what I'm doing right now. Like I, I need to write, I need, I'm not writing enough as far as I'm concerned. I need to keep writing, keep working, keep making MXPX better and eventually maybe i'll get into partnering up with people like philip and uh saving a small venue in a in a small dilapidated town but uh i'm not quite ready for that adventure i think i think i've still got a lot of miles to go in my own shoes here and uh i'm really happy with how how things are going um mxpx has been practicing uh, Tom and Yuri were over here yesterday and, um, they're excited. They're, they're digging what, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm almost like writing a song and, and then like trying to like get, you know, bring it to the band right away. So if I write a song and it's ready, almost ready, even if it's almost ready, I'll, I'll bring it out. So we're working on a couple new things and, and like I said, don't get too excited. It takes us a very long time. Uh, our, our last self-titled album took us well over a year from writing and practicing to recording and releasing. So well over a year. So um, this one will take at least the same and we're just get, kind of getting started. But uh, good things happen. Good things happen when you just keep going. So 
I appreciate you guys. Thanks for listening to the songs. Thanks for listening to this podcast. Even if you're like, who's MXPX? I just listened to the Mike Herrera podcast. Cool. That's awesome, too. You know, I, I doubt that there's too many, that don't, but uh, I'm sure there's a few people that are, aren't into punk rock that do listen to this podcast. But uh, if you're one of those people, please leave me a voicemail at <laughs> 360-830-6660. And uh, I might do, I didn't get to all the voicemails on this episode, and I'm going to get to the rest on maybe the next episode. Maybe we'll do another one soon. So um, keep sending in your voicemails. And if you have questions, um, I think the voicemail is the best way to do it. That way you can be part of the podcast. Um, and that's about it. So... If I want to, I'm going to close, um, I guess, you know, a question from the internet, and this talks about what I just, you know, why don't I like to talk about what I'm working on? And, and generally I don't, although I'm kind of opening up a little bit more than normal now. And I think things are changing, but I think in the past I didn't want to jinx it. That's the, the easy answer. I didn't want to jinx it. I didn't want to say I was doing something and then not do it. Uh, but I've gone out on a limb and I've done interviews lately podcasts, other people's podcasts, I've said in this podcast, probably I've said this next record is going to be our best record. It's going to, it's going to be better than our last record. It's going to be better than self-titled. And, and that is, I just say it because I, it has to be, <laughs> I can't think about it too hard because then it's going to put too much pressure on me. But I think that's a form of me, uh, putting it out there, you know, and I don't normally do that. I'm getting outside my comfort zone, but, uh, I think in order to really make a record that's better than the last one, you have to say it. So I'm saying it and I'm going to leave you with that. Um, please, if you, if you don't mind subscribe to this podcast, if you're not already doing that, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, go to MXPX's YouTube channel, subscribe to that. If you're not already following MXPX on our socials, wherever it is, MXPXPX on Instagram, MXPX on Twitter. We'd love it if you followed us. Um, we don't spam too much. But we get the information out there. All right, you guys. Thank you so much. And shout out to Bob McKnight. He's going to edit this podcast. Uh, appreciate it, buddy. All right. Take care. <laughs>